Crips here, and as always, thanks for joining me. There you go. All right, so a lot of the times After Effects is used to make intros for your YouTube videos or whatever, and often we will use an animated background. So that's what I'm about today. I'm going to teach you how to make a simple animated background. So let's get moving. So first thing I need to do is create a new composition. So I'm going to click on the new composition icon here and then press OK. Now, the second thing I need to do in order to make anything, I have to apply a layer. So I'm going to use a solid layer, new, solid. And yep, if it's not the same size, you just make comp size and that matches your composition. Duh. And here we go. Now, the easiest way to do it is by using a preset. So if I was to go over here, right click, or left click, sorry, browse presets, Adobe Bridge opens up. And then I can look in Adobe After Effects support files, presets. And I have a folder here called Backgrounds. And then if I click on that, I can then see the preview here. And I can just make that over here a bit. And that shows me the animation of the background. And if I want to use it, I double click it and that will automatically go in or over the solid layer. But the interesting thing is everything you see here has been created in After Effects. And I'm going to show you how you can create your very own animated background. So let's just get rid of this window. And let's get moving. So the thing we're going to look for is an effect called fractal noise. So I've already typed it in in the effects and presets. And you'll see it right here at the bottom, fractal noise. I'm going to expand this so I can see. I want to point something out. Um, you can probably hit the tilde key and it does the same thing. It'll maximize the window. My tilde key has been a uh, hotkey to something else. But just, just, I'm showing this because you have fractal and fractal noise. We want fractal noise. So once we have it, just double click. It will automatically apply it to the solid layer. I only have one layer, so I'm not worried that I accidentally applied it to the wrong layer. And that's it. Here's my background. And you may notice this or see this before. If, you, if you've been following me for a while, you'll notice that I've used this in an older intro. So there you go. So obviously that's what I did. I used a fractal noise to create that uh, intro. Now, and it's very, very simple to use. So I'll just go through a couple of the settings to get you started. Fractal type, it says basics. And I've got all these different settings. Now you can just go through it until you get the desired effect that you want. Because I'm not sure what you're trying to create, but these are all the options you have to change the way it looks. Now once you're there, a uh, noise type is quite good too. I can go to block, and the best way I can describe it is like I'm making the pixels really big and, and, and sharp edges, and as I go down the list, the pixels get smaller and softer. That's the, uh, <laughs> the best I can do in describing what that means. Contrast really speaks for itself. Increase the, the black and brightness increases the white. Uh, and you know, I can also go negative, so I can actually add in more black if I want to. And complexity is another one. So complexity and evolution is probably the ones you're going to play with the most. Complexity just adds more noise. So I'm adding more and more pixels, noise, layers, whatever you want to call it. And evolution brings everything to life. So let's do that. So it looks now it looks like it's. Uh, it's like a building on fire and it's smoking away, okay? And because they all have the stopwatches, everything can be animated. So let's do something like that. Let's just, just animate this simply, okay? Let's just go back to the top. Turn it on. Um, I might go into five seconds. And I might do one full rotation like so. And then just play that. And it probably go a bit slow because it has to ramp preview it. Yeah, it will. But I'll just move the slider manually, and you can see that it, as, a, as the CTI moves in the timeline, it's definitely animating. All right, and that's basically all this. Blend mode really speaks for itself. Multiply screen. If you use Photoshop, you'll understand what the blend modes are, especially if you're going to apply it with other layers. Opacity, again, it speaks for itself. Now, obviously, a lot of the people want to know, well, yeah, but I want to change the color. Okay, let's do that. Uh, there's three ways or three ways I change the colors. Uh, I can go into effects or presets, but you can also simply just go into effects. It is identical, but I'm going to go to effects and then I'm going to go into color corrections and look for something called tint. Here it is, tints, and it gives me two colors, my black and my white. If I go click in the swatch or the color swatch, I can then change the color. So I can now create a fireball look. 
So there you go. So if I now bring this up, you can see I've kind of created what looks like a bit of a fireball effect. All right. So that's one one. Uh, one one. That's one effect that I like to use. Oh, tri colors is the same thing. Effects, color correction, and I'm going to use tritone. Really, that gives me uh, three colors to work, like a midtone, high, uh, highlight, midtone, and shadow. So it just gives me three colors opposed to two. But my favorite is Colorama. Effects, uh, color correction, right, let's see, let's see if we can find color, Colorama. Uh, probably not now, because I'm probably, here we go, Colorama, my eyes are shut. Now, Colorama, I find, is probably the best thing you could use. So I'm going to go into the output cycle here, and this gives me a couple of nice options here. If I go you in the presets, it really comes with presets, and I like to use fire. There you go. So I've already created instantly the fire that I'm after. So by using the combination of, say, Colorama and Fractal Noise, I can really, really change the way this looks. I can skew it, scale it. I can change the way this looks. Uh, just a simple click of a button, and I can come up with some really, really cool effects that I can apply to my background as an intro. And honestly, the sky's the limit, and it is just as far as your imagination can take you. And that, my friends, is how you can create animated backgrounds in After Effects. And as always, thanks for watching.